Welcome to uh, Friday of uh, what is a very long and difficult week for uh, a lot of us. And uh, we'd like to welcome in the audience who's uh, watching on KPLR Channel 11. 11.2 is uh, now covering the Big 550 KTRS. Yeah, that's channel 187 on uh, your charter system. It's also 11.2 if you have no cable and you have an HD antenna. We welcome you along. Don't forget, that's with our partnership with uh, KPLR channel 11.2. Uh, we're also a partnership with The Post, stltoday.com. Go to the Opinion tab. Um, you can go to ktrs.com, front page. You can watch us. You can watch us on your app, uh, or you can watch us on your phone, on your tablet. You can also download the app. Jennifer Williams checked in from Naples, Florida, listening on the phone app, Crystal wow. Clear Technology. Um, and, uh, of course, you can do it the old-fashioned way on the Big 550 KTRS Radio. Good morning, Jane Duker. Good morning, McGraw. So normally the uh, board meeting is in session, uh, but uh, John Deal busy off running uh, the state and uh, Chad Garrison leaving us for a new job. Right. I mean, well, you got the A-team now. It's okay. So while we revamp and get a whole new list of regulars, um, John Deal on hiatus. We haven't kicked him off the show, but he's busy running the state. Yeah, he's got a he's lot got of responsibilities. Lots of things going on. So we, we're going to find a placeholder for him until. But we wanted to have you on uh, because you're such a fan of the show. True. And, and you have such beautiful insights. And with such a crazy week, we wanted to have at least somebody in here to sort of help to, to uh, decipher some of the legalese I and mean, all the things going on. Yes. And let's start with the Justice Department comes out with this report. And I've watched almost everything and I've read almost everything. And the talking heads nationally have got this story so wrong and just completely factually incorrect. First, I think the biggest story in this is that Eric Holder came out and said it much differently than Bob McCullough, but in some ways much more emphatically Yes, that Darren Wilson w did absolutely nothing wrong in what happened that and day. And that it was a, you know, a justified use of force. Right. And so, you know, there was a lot, obviously, a lot of discussion about when Prosecutor McCullough came out and sort of gave a narration of the evidence. Right. And there were a and lot it, of people very uh, angry about that. In fact, they want to let a grand juror talk. Right. Because they're afraid that the story sort of wasn't fairly portrayed and right. whatnot. And if you read the narration of the evidence in the Department of Justice report, and that's, they did one report on the shooting, and then they did a separate report on the police department in Ferguson, sort of the pattern and practices investigation, which is a, a different issue. But if you look at the narration of the evidence in the DOJ report, it was it was far more clear. And, and the report was very clear to say that yes, there were a lot of witnesses, but if the witnesses' testimony disagreed with the forensic evidence, the physical evidence, or basically was incredible based on all the evidence, they, they discounted it accordingly. Right. Um, and what they did was what sort of what the normal prosecution looks like, where the prosecutors get all the evidence from all sources, then they make, they use their discretion, they apply the facts to the law, and they determine whether they will institute a prosecution. Right. Okay. That's not what McCullough did because he thought that it was important for transparency in the community to say, okay, I'm going to let it all out. Right. I'm going to let a grand jury, I'm going to let citizens, almost like citizens review, right. let the citizens, let 12 people decide so that no one can say it was just me or that I somehow pick and chose what evidence I did and didn't do. Right. The Justice Department did it where basically this is Eric Holder's decision, his discretionary decision not to prosecute based on the evidence that's laid out in the report. And it's far more emphatic and sort of, it brings all the evidence together saying, you know, basically it was a completely justified shoot. Not only does it say that, it also says that African Americans came forward yes. and said, this is how it happened. And that their recollection which can be skewed, right? Because there's no eyewitness eyewitnesses is, is yes. can be wrong at times. But there are eyewitness uh, accounts that back up the forensic evidence, so you Correct. would lend them more credibility because which, because the evidence supports what they're what they saying. Said. And and in the report was very clear that the Justice Department attempted to do that to compare every witness to their own statements, right. to the physical evidence, and to weigh that and basically say, you know, we can't even present this case we don't even have probable cause to bring a case much less get it to a jury which also supports mccullough's position that this indict a ham sandwich 
is just a complete misnomer, um, you know, wrong narrative, illegal right. mm-hmm. way to handle things. Right. And not only that, there was witnesses who were quoted as telling the Justice Department, if it were me, I would have shot sooner. Well, I mean, and that's now. A now, very I wouldn't necessarily take. I wouldn't necessarily take a witness and say, "Oh, he should have saw it sooner." But, but that goes to show you that here's an eyewitness who right. saw it, who was like, "Wow, that that police officer, in my opinion, showed some restraint." And if that is a, considered a credible witness by Eric Holder and his staff, right. that's a credible witness to me. And it's a team of people. It's not just one person that that reviews all of this. And and I thought, you know, that the the recitation of the evidence was really compelling. I so mean, it also says that hands up, don't shoot, never happened. Basically, yeah. And that he was not shot in the back. And that, I mean, I'm not sure that there's, other than having the cigarellos in the hand, I'm not sure there was one piece of Dorian Johnson's testimony that was not refuted by credible and forensic evidence. And they, he went out and he told that story and told the wrong story. And it was retold over and over again. Don't shoot. Hands up became a rallying cry. There's a hands up coalition now. The Rams players came out with written all over their forearms. Hands up. Don't shoot. Kanye West had a hands up. Don't shoot at the Emmys. All of it predicated on things that were not true. I mean, factually, you know, now, you know, I believe strongly that the Michael Brown case shed light on issues that St. Louis has been ignoring for decades We'll get to decades. that. We'll get to that in a second. Right. We'll so, get to that in a second. You know, I, I don't want to, just like I don't want the people who will look at the pattern and practice investigation and say somehow because of that, Michael Brown, th- that, that shooting was resolved wrongly. I think that's an overgeneralization, just like I think saying that just because Michael Brown, you know, the narrative that was set out there may not have been accurate. The underlying frustration, anger and problems that that gave rise to that anger and frustration are there. There's a story in The New York Times today, and the story goes to and talks to these people who were advocating and supporting and propagating the hands up, don't shoot. And there's a quote by one of them that that says, I don't care what the facts say. Uh, I know what happened. Hands up, don't shoot actually happened. So it, y- people don't They're, care what the facts are. They're going to make up their own facts. But- I, right. And I think you see that sort of on both sides in the extreme. Right. But I think most of the people really just want to understand what happened and realistically, you know, address things that need to be addressed without overreacting. I think I think there are many people, elected officials, protesters, callers, who owe Bob McCullough an apology, who called him out, called for him to step down, said it was inappropriate. What kind of prosecutor is he? Why not just call a trial and let these these people on let a jury decide? Right? All all of those people who were calling and just critical of Bob McCullough should come out and apologize and say, boy, if Eric Holder came out with the same conclusion. I would say Probably even a stronger conclusion. Than I would what even Bob say. McCullough I would even say. Said. I would even mm-hmm. agree with that. But uh, Eric Holder came out stronger than Bob McCullough did. Um, I think. I think there and are the quite silence, a few people who own who owe Bob McCullough an apology. Well, the, the the silence is deafening about sort of refuting this. I mean. Oh, that's right. That's right. That, no, right. <laughs> not not one talking head has gone. Well, you know, my boy, Bob McCullough. Bob, Bob, Bob McCullough turns out to be right, except for me on. Bob, uh, Bill O'Reilly last night well, and, when I said it turns out that the Justice Department thinks the only good decent cop in Ferguson is Darren Wilson. <laughs> I mean, boy, that yeah. When you get to the other report, it sure looks that way, doesn't it? And but I mean, I, I think and and I think Bob McCullough said it best. I've known him for twenty three years, so you know, I I obviously have uh, opinions about him, but I think the fact that he kept it steady, did the right thing in the face of unbelievable criticism, yes. hatred. But, you know, um, I think he also acknowledged that that needed to happen. And this is part of the healing process. Is, and so, you know, I applaud him for saying, look, I, this isn't about vindication and about, you know, I, I don't, it doesn't matter whether I'm vindicated. It doesn't matter. I never felt like I was doing something wrong. I just, put, you know, he put his prosecutor eyes on and said, I just did my job. And I, I wish we had a lot more people who were that focused on saying, look, I, I get that you're mad. I get that there's big problems here, but I got a job to do. I'm going to do my slice of the job, whatever this is for public service and do my thing. He was the only one who did his job. 
I, I, you know, when you get right down to it, it sort of seemed like it to me. All right. And so now that's what one half of this report said. There was another report. We'll get into that because uh, changes clearly need to be made in Ferguson. We'll talk about that. We also have to get to uh, Senator uh, uh, Danforth's comments uh, from the uh, from his homily uh, earlier in the week, and Tom Schweik and all that fallout. We'll be talking with uh, Jane Duker, who is an attorney, Democratic operative. Is that safe to say? Strategist, but I like Demo- some Republicans too. <laughs> Don't say that publicly. Oh, sorry, I just did, didn't I? <laughs> Nine twenty.